fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and the hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Cattle raising was the first great industry in Texas, but when the days of the open range passed, many farmers and sheep herders settled in the new territory. There was bitter rivalry between these new settlers and the cattlemen, and their disputes over boundaries and water rights would have resulted in range wars if the masked rider of the plains had not interfered. He made both factions realize that the West could never be made safe for honest men unless they united and fought side by side for law and order. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Valley City. Someone's waiting on the trail ahead. Hi, Silver! How are Our story begins in Saul Bemis General Store at Valley City. Lefty Curtis opens the door and... Hi there, Lefty. Howdy, Saul. I'm looking for my boss. Is Mr. Hammond around here any place? You ain't blind, are you? Oh, hello, Mr. Hammond. Howdy there, Peggy. Hello. What are you looking for me for, Lefty? Boss, there's been more sheep drove into Sweetwater Canyon. No. Close to a hundred head. The dirty, sneaking, rotten crooks. It was drove right over the edge. You can see them pile up below. One hundred head of prime sheep killed. Them blasted cattlemen? Lefty, did any of the boys see them do it? Did they leave a trail that could be followed? Was there anything to prove at all? I'm sorry, boss. Nothing. It was done like they always do it, when there's nobody to see them. Now, if we post guards towards Sweetwater Canyon, they'll turn around and drive the sheep into White Rock or Big Smoke here, one of them others. We'd have to hire a regiment to keep them from our critters. I'll have to tell the sheriff about this. I've already told him. He should be on his way here now. I stopped in his office trying to find you. Well, Peggy, I think this should convince you now. Of what, Pa? Of what? Why, the kind of ornery low-down skunks them cattlemen are, that's what. I suppose you're referring to Pete Lambert. Uh, he's one of them. Pete wouldn't do anything like this. What's more, Pa, it ain't been proved yet that any of the cattlemen are implicated. Who else would try to kill off my sheep? I can't say, but I know that Pete wouldn't. Uh, turn in again your own paw. Pa, that ain't true. If you'd forget Pete like any girl of sense would, and, uh... And, uh... Go ahead, say it, Pa, if I'd marry Lefty instead. Sure, we'll get hitched one of these days, Peggy. You'll come around to it in time. I think not. Shucks, you sure ain't gonna turn me down for Pete, are you? <laughs> you wouldn't take him when you could get a man, would you? Forget it, Lefty. She's spoiled and I'm to blame for it. But she's a Hammond. She won't always be so flighty and idle-headed. Here comes the sheriff, if you're sure you're through discussing me in public. You're a Hammond, girl. You sure got your ma's tongue. Howdy, folks. Howdy, Sheriff. Have you told you what happened, Sheriff? I've already sent out two of my deputies to see if they can't find some trace of the sidewinder. I reckon you know who done this. Uh-huh. But the law still says i got to have proof before I can act. Then get proof. That's what I'm trying to do. But I'll get it. Don't you worry, Mr. Hammond. Them ranchers won't get by with their slick tricks forever. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Watch up. See that fella? 
Saul's waiting on? Here's the grub you asked for, stranger. I got it all wrapped up. Thank you. Here's your money. Two, three, three, fifty-five. Just right. Why, he's... What's that, Lefty? Big Bill Nyberg. You're talking to me? Bill, how'd you get here? Where'd you come hey, from? Hey, hold on, stranger. If you're Big Bill, hatch your hands. I think not. What was that draw? I never seen the light. Just drop that gun back in its holster, Sheriff. You... You've mistaken me for another man. Don't try to act on that mistake. Wait, Sheriff. Huh? I reckon I did make a mistake. Stepping out of the shadows that way, the stranger sure did look like Big Bill just for a second. But he ain't Sheriff. Bill weren't that tall, and he didn't hold himself so straight, neither. Doggone, Lefty, make up your mind. Is he or ain't he Bill Nyberg? He... I'm not Big Bill, and don't try to follow me. Just a second, stranger. Holy the fella be, Sheriff. I told you you weren't Big Bill, didn't I? And don't go getting yourself sidetracked, Sheriff. It's them crooked ranchers I'm interested in, not strangers. Well, then, come along. We'll have a look at where your sheep are drove over and see if my deputies was able to find any evidence that Lefty didn't. After leaving the store, the Lone Ranger made his way to the place where he had concealed his great horse, Silver. He mounted and then raced to the well-hidden camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Here are the supplies, Tonto. Oh, that, that good. And Lefty fell for our trap. Him think you, Big Bill? Only for a moment, but a moment was enough. Every sheriff in the West has a reward notice describing Big Bill. Oh. But the only people who have ever seen him in person are the members of his old gang and the deputy sheriff who joined the gang to get evidence against them. Mm, that's right. The only ones until we caught him and turned him over to the law. Well, that news hasn't reached here yet. We get here plenty fast. I wanted to act on Big Bill's tip that when his gang was broken up and Notch Hopkins escaped, Notch came to this territory. Oh. Everything's fitting together. We know that two of Hammond's own men drove his sheep over the cliff. The breed they call Pedro and that fellow they call Fritz. Tonto not see him drive sheep, but Tonto see him come from that way. I have no doubt they were the men. They didn't drive the sheep over. They were close enough to see who did and report them. The fact that they didn't report anybody proves them guilty. Ah. I don't want them arrested, however, until we know who's behind them. They have no motive. And Hammond wouldn't deliberately kill his own sheep just to drive the cattlemen off the range. As a matter of fact... He was here first, and the cattlemen didn't take over the north end of the range until Hammond assured them he didn't plan to use it. Not right. But if Hammond's daughter marries Lefty, Hammond plans to retire and turn over the management of the ranch entirely to Lefty. And of course, when Hammond dies, the whole spread will belong to Lefty. That's why he want cattlemen get out. It gives him a motive. I'm sure now that Notch Hopkins and Lefty Curtis are one and the same person. Notch was ambitious. That's why he turned crooked. Getting things honestly wasn't fast enough for him. Uh, it would be like Notch or Lefty, as he calls himself now, to want the whole range. And the fact that he'll get nothing until he marries Peggy Hammond, and that Peggy doesn't like him, wouldn't bother him at all. In the first place, Peggy isn't likely to marry anyone without her father's consent, and her father wants her to marry Lefty. In the second place, Lefty's own conceit won't let him believe she really doesn't like him. What you do now? All oh, right, now I'm going to take off this disguise. It's done its work. Anyone who had been in Big Bill's gang would have thought I was him until he looked closer, which is just what Lefty did. <laughs> Tonto put disguise on plenty good. Huh? You did. <laughs> and as soon as it's off, I'll tell you a plan I have. You tell all Lefty feller named Notch? No. Even if we were believed, Lefty wouldn't get much of a jail sentence on the old charges against him. In a year or two, he'd go free to go on with his crimes. Ah, uh, him plenty bad feller. However, if we can prove he's behind the killing of these sheep, he'll get what he deserves, and we're going to see that he does. That be plenty hard. Him not drive sheep. Pedro, Fritz do that. Yes, and the three of them working together on the same outfit gives them a dozen opportunities a day to lay their plans without being observed. Ah. Uh. Nevertheless, Tonto, the only way we can clear the cattlemen and place the guilt on Lefty is to know when the next flock of sheep is going to be driven over the edge of the canyon. Then you take Lawman there, huh? That would still involve only Pedro and Fritz. If arrested, they might testify against Lefty, or they might not. No, Kimasabi, we don't even need to know where they plan to kill the sheep. Just find out when, and our plan will work. Both the masked man and Tonto trailed Lefty as best they could throughout the following week. But as the Lone Ranger had pointed out earlier, there were still times when Lefty could give instructions without being overheard. 
The week passed, and one day Peggy Hammond was sitting alone on the seat of a buckboard in front of the general store, and... Stand still there, Spars. Why, Peggy? Peggy. I thought that was your pa's buckboard, but I didn't see you at first. Now, that's a fine thing. Oh, shucks, I reckon you know how I meant it. You come to town alone? Lefty drove me in. He's in the store now. Huh. Jealous? Of that ornery lowdown... Oh, I'm sorry, honey. But every time I think of that skunk, I get hot under the collar. You sure do. I got reason, I guess. Gosh, Peggy, it seems like I never get to see you anymore. Pa won't let you come to the house. No, and he won't let you come to town unless him or Lefty is with you. Blast it all, it ain't fair. Do you think I like it, Pete? I suppose not. But the worst of it is being kept away from you on account of being blamed for something I never done. Pa don't blame you, Pete. He He don't blame me. He blames all us cattlemen together. So it amounts to the same thing in the end. I'm sorry, Pete. Hey. What's the matter? (laughs) Nothing, honey. Just got an idea is all. An idea? Uh-huh. <laughs> I suppose that's left his horse tied to the end of the buckboard? Yes. But... <laughs> then what do you say I untie it, leave it at the hitch rail, and put my horse in its place? But whatever for? Well, then maybe I'd climb on the buckboard with you and drive you on home. That way we'd have a chance to talk together. And as long as left his horse is left behind, he wouldn't have to walk home either. But do you think we dare? Why not? Oh, but, but if Pa saw me with you, well, he won't. I'll leave you before we get inside of the house and ride on back. Then, then where? <laughs> Say, ain't I a fellow with good ideas? <laughs> I'll untie his horse. I'll watch and see he don't come out. Come on, fella. Just let me get that rope now. Hurry, Pete. You bet. All right, horse. Over here now. <laughs> Got your eye on him, honey? He's still talking to Saul. <laughs> He'll be hopping mad about this, which will just suit me fine. Well, hurry and climb up. <clears throat> there we are. Hand me that whip and we'll get going. Hey there! Oh, oh no, that beats all. Lefty, why couldn't you have stayed inside? Get down off of that wagon, you sheep killer. Lefty. What'd you call me? Just what you are. Now get down. Peggy, was you gonna drive away with this sidewinder? You're not my boss, Lefty. You're Paul here about this. Why, heavens, Peter, you getting down or do I have to drag you from that seat? I'll get down. And I'll ask you to take back that about being a sheep killer. Take it back? Why, that's just what you are, ain't it? You and all them thieving dry gulch and skunks. Wait, you... no. oh. You hit me. You'll pay for that. Stand up and take the rest you got coming. Pete, watch out. A knife. I'll show you. You'll, you'll, uh, bless you. I'll get you for that. I'll show He'll you. He'll stab you, Pete. No, he won't. I... I'll fix you. Hey, hey, my arm. Drop that knife. I'll break your arm off. Let me go. Let me go. Drop it. There it is. Now then. But you ain't got the best of me yet. Then take this. Uh, and this. Uh, don't hit me. Let me go. You lying polecat. Now, uh, here's one to finish up the job. No, no, no. You'll pay for this, Pete. You'll see if you don't. I'll fix you. I'll show you. You think I can't, don't you? But you wait. You'll see. Now, give me I'll that, you piggy. You dirty skunk. I'm driving I'll you home like I started in your you before. Body. Get up there. I'll fix you for that. Get up. I got a way to fix him. He'll see. You sure got a licking, Lefty. Let me give you a hand to stand up. Pete didn't break your jaw, did he, Lefty? Get away from me. Let me be. I can take care of myself. I'll show him and you and everybody. A masked hombre. Why, he was hit behind that building. Yeah. Why, uh, who in blazes was that fella? Well, I got other things to figure out right now. Wait till I see Saul. Why, heaven, Saul had better do what I tell him. Saul! Where are you, Saul? Come here, blast you thief, and hide. Where are you? Here I am, Lefty. Why didn't you help me out just now? Why didn't you give me a hand with Pete? Well, I, I heard a ruckus, but uh, I was too busy to pay any attention. Say, your eyes most swelled shut, and your shirt all ripped off of you. What's happened? That's what Pete done. Yeah? The polecat. He must have got the best of you. Maybe he did for now. Yes, but he... But what I'm going to do to him is plenty. And so... You're going to help me. Oh, but Lefty, I, I ain't no fighter. I could Who's asked a... you to fight, your yellow bag of bones? Just shut up and listen for once. But what do you... Or would you rather I told the boss about how you've been cheating him on supplies? How you've been charging for two barrels of flour and delivering one? How you've been doing a lot of other Quiet. things? Quiet. Keep still. Don't, Lefty. Quiet. Now do you think you can help me? Just, just don't say no more about them things. It's blame lucky for you. Nobody else around here knows about your crooked tricks, so... Sure, Lefty, sure. But please And don't... it's done lucky for me the same as you. Because it's going to be your word and mine, Saul. It's going to fix Pete Lambert the way I want him fixed. Blast him. <laughs> Blast him. 
The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. After the Lone Ranger had watched the fight in town between Pete Lambert and Lefty Curtis, he rode back to camp once more. Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, boy. You want me for Lefty now? <laughs> Tell him it won't be necessary. I think Lefty will act tomorrow. You find out. I just saw him take the beating of his life from Pete Lambert. He can't act today. There isn't enough time. He'll likely make his plans tonight and strike tomorrow. That's what Tonto think. We'll have to take the chance that Lefty will act as we think he will. Him do that all right. I don't doubt that he will. It isn't like him to wait. He'll get revenge just as soon as he can. Uh, During the night, Tonto, call on every man I told you about yesterday. I'll take care of the sheriff myself. How to do that? Good. I think we're going to end these sheep killings and bring a criminal to justice at the same time. <laughs> No sooner had the sun set than Tonto leaped into the saddle, gave a shouted command to scout, and sent the fleet horse racing toward the north end of the fertile rangeland. The masked man himself was in the saddle before dawn. Silvery, flashing, flying ghosts swept toward town, outracing the wind. At length, in the first light of dawn, the lone ranger reached his destination and drew rein in front of the sheriff's hold. Oh, Silver! Oh, boy! Oh, there! Hip. Open up. Is trouble somewhere? Just a second. I'll come in. A crook. Close the door. Close it. What is this? What do you want? You're already dressed. Good. Get into your coat and come with me. Now, look Don't here. argue with my six-gun, Sheriff. But where are we going? What's the idea? What's that mess? You and I are going to the Hammond Ranch. Huh? We're going to trap the men who have been killing Hammond sheep. Hey, you know who they are? Perhaps. Then tell me what I'm you know I'm not about. going to tell you. I'm going to show you. Now get into your coat. Give a fellow a chance, will you? Sheriff, what time do Hammond's men leave the bunkhouse? They'll be out by dawn. Why, you want to get there before they're gone? Just after they're gone. Come on. This looks to me like some kind of a trick. It is. Is your horse saddled? I ought to saddle up before I fix me my breakfast. He's standing around the side of the house. Get him. He'll come when I call. Here, Chief. Come here, boy. But you just admitted this is a trick. Not on you, Sheriff. On the crooks. Yeah. Well, I ain't got nothing but your word for it. Which you'll have to take. If I wasn't covered up... you are. Now into the saddle. We're going to Hammond's place, you say? We are steady, Silver. Hey, what did you call that? Don't stop to talk. Get going. Come on, Silver. Get up. Get up there. Now, with the early sun to light their way, the masked man and the sheriff sent their mounts plunging down the trail toward the distant Hammond Ranch House. When they left the main trail, the sound of their horses' hoofs brought both Hammond and his daughter to the door of their home. A masked fellow! Oh, Silver! Oh, 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 Come on, Sheriff. Up the steps. Is it a hold-up? It isn't, Peggy. You needn't be alarmed. Well, if it ain't a hold-up, what's the mask for? And why the gun? I'm making sure you do as you're told. Who's inside the house? Why? Why, no one. Your men, where are they? Out on the range, where they belong. And there's no one but you at the ranch now? No one but the cook. Good. Now inside with you, all three. Hey, inside, you Inside, I said. Please, Pop, don't argue with them. I'd argue if I had a six-gun in my hand. Inside. You too, Sheriff. I wish you'd explain what you're up to. You'll learn before I'm through. Now take chairs and place them in front of the window. So that they face that barn across the yard. This is the doggondest hocus pocus I ever heard tell of. There's a reason for it. The only reason is that them cattlemen are up to some trick again. Now then, Hammond, you can see the door of that barn over there. Tell me this. Is there any other way it can be entered or left? Blast it, what's the idea of a fool question like that? I expect an answer. Well, that door's the only way I know of to get in or out, and short of busting in the side of the barn. Very well. The three of you are staying right where you are. You're keeping your eyes on that barn. I don't know how long you'll have to stay here, but I do know this. You will stay and make no attempt to make a break for it. (laughs) 
In the meantime, at some distance from the ranch house, Lefty Curtis was standing beside his horse. He kept looking impatiently, first at the broad expanse of range that was spread out below him, then over his shoulder toward the trail from town. At last, he heard a horse approaching. Whoa there! Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, I couldn't make it no sooner, Lefty. Well, you're late enough, Saul. But what I want to know is what's keeping Pedro and Fritz. They're even later than you are. You said nobody but you was going to see me here. Don't get head up. We ain't meeting the boys. Then what was I that? picked out this place up here so as we could see them when they got started. Yeah, look down below. Huh? See where them sheep are scattered out? Uh-huh. Well, Fritz and Pedro will come riding from over beyond there. They'll get the sheep started with the dogs, then head them for the canyon. They're using the dogs? Won't they try to keep the sheep out of danger? <laughs> they won't be needed after the sheep is bunched. The boys will shoot him. Oh. And that'll get him and madder than losing his critters will. Why'd we have to come here at all? You gave them their orders, didn't you? Yeah, and I'm making sure they're obeyed. There they are. It took them long enough. They got the dogs rounding up the sheep now. Let's see. Five minutes to get him in a flock. Fifteen or so to reach a canyon. And more than an hour for us to get back to the ranch house. It's safe enough. Come on. Mm. Blast you, stand still. All right, Saul. Here's where Pete Lambert and his friends are fixed for good and all. Get up. Get along there. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Back at the ranch house, Hammond, his daughter, Peggy, and the sheriff were forced to obey the masked man. The hours dragged by slowly as they watched the barn the Lone Ranger had pointed out. Dad, rat it, masked man. Can't we take a walk around or, or do something or other? I'm getting so tired of sitting in one place and beginning to eat. You'll stay where you are. Uh, sure, if I heard, ain't heard you complain none at all. You must like being kept prisoner. It ain't that I like it, Hammond. Just that I'm reserving judgment. Reserving judgment? Nah. Uh, Look. Huh? See something, Peggy? Y it's Lefty, riding back to the house. What's bringing him here? Well, by thunder, that's Saul with him. Mask fella, you figure on making them prisoners too? No. They're drawn up. They look kind of excited. Sheriff, if the cattlemen have been up to something, and you let this stranger hold us here. What the? What the? Don't slap leather, Lefty. You dirty killer. Has, has this fellow held you up, Hammond? Not so far. Lefty, what are you doing back at the ranch house this time of day? Gosh, your mask fell in here, drove it out of my head. Boss, them cattlemen got your sheep again. Lost them. But this time they wasn't as slick as they thought they was. Go on, Saul, tell them what you've seen. I haven't sold. Did you see something? Well, it was like this, Hammond. I, uh... Get on uh, with it. I'm not trying to. I was riding over towards the old Risden place, figuring on having a look at the house and maybe buying it, and, uh... You doggone putter and old fool, get to the point. Well, I was just trying to explain how I happened to be riding near Big Smoky Canyon. That's where the sheep was drove over? Uh-huh. And was Pete Lambert and Ike Billings that done it? No, oh, oh, no, it couldn't have been. Didn't you just hear Saul say so? You couldn't get around that, Peggy. How many did they kill this time? Saul looked me up and we rode over. Judging roughly, I'd say somewhere between 75 and 100. And Saul, you seen Pete and Ike so you could swear to it? Well, I... Well, go uh, on. Sure. Sure I could swear to it. I seen them plain. Stranger? Yes, yeah, Sheriff? I wasn't saying anything while you held this here, because I heard what you called your horse. That the mask you're wearing put me in mind of a fellow I'd heard of. Well, either you ain't the fella I thought you was... Or he ain't the kind of fellow most folks thinks he is. You think I was in on the plot to kill Hammond's sheep? You must have been. And I'll see you hung for it. Maybe you've got the drop on us now, mask fella. But you'll get yours before I'm through. I'll show you something. Watch that barn. Maybe then you'll understand why I forced you to stay here. You can't fool us no longer. Wait. Pete, I, all of you, come out. Now what? Pete and Ike. And Ike Billings. And, and there's Thurston and there's two cow hands. Well, I'll be doggoned. And there's Westover and Larkin and the Roper boys. But they must have been... In that barn all the time, every cattleman that uses the range was there. You said yourself there was no way in or out of that barn except for the door you were watching. There wasn't a cattleman free to destroy the sheep, as Saul and Lefty claimed they did. But, but I don't say... Come on I... in, fellas. Beat, all of you. There's some explaining to be done here. Howdy, Peggy. Howdy, Mr. Hammond. Am I going loco? Saul says Pete and I killed my sheep. But me and the sheriff and Peggy here know blame well it was in my barn all the time. Now, how's that going to be explained? It was a scheme of lefties. I didn't know Saul was in on it. No doubt lefty used him so that the evidence would be clinching. It's a lie. Seems I to mean... me, Saul, 
It must have been you that were straying from the truth. You've seen for yourself Pete and Ike didn't do it. Well, I... Guys, Saul, must have been some other fellows you seen. Yeah, Lefty. I, I reckon it was. But you both know the sheep were destroyed, of course. Sure we do. That's why we thought it was a cattleman. Tonto just rode up with two horsemen. Perhaps he'll have something to say about that. Come on in, Tonto. The ancient's got a gun on Pedro and Fritz. I have told nothing, senor. Nothing, I swear it. Let the ancient let us go, will you? We can't be blamed for what we never done. You stopped them in time, Tonto? Uh, me follow them. Them head plop for canyon. Then me make them stop. Then the sheep are safe. That right. Good work, Himasabi. Now, Lefty and you, Saul, how do you explain reporting those sheep killed when they haven't been? Well, I don't know. I... Well, maybe Saul lied to you me. You ain't but... going to make me the goat for this, Lefty. You ain't going to leave me holding the bag. I never wanted to have nothing to do with this trick in the first place. It was you made me do it. See, oh. that is so, senor. Lefty, he make us do what he say. That is the truth. Oh, oh, your oh, senor. That clinches it. You're all under arrest. Take them out, boys. Mr. Hammond, I hope you ain't gonna blame me and the other ranchers here no more for the trouble there's been. Of course not, Pete. But I don't see why Lefty... Well, the engine told us about that part of it, Mr. Hammond. You see, Lefty figured on marrying Peggy. But he was. I know, honey, but Lefty didn't. And he figured with himself married to Peggy, the ranch turned over to him, and us cattlemen drove off the range, he'd be kingpin in these parts. And the engine said something more, Sheriff. He said if you looked it up you'd find where Lefty used to call himself Notch Hopkins. And Notch Hopkins was... One of Big Bill Nyberg's gang. Now, where'd that mash fella get to? I got some apologies to make to him. I... <laughs> Doggone. I should have known he wouldn't wait to be thanked. But why wouldn't he, Sheriff? If you folks guessed who he was like I did, you wouldn't ask me that. Friends, that mash fella was the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>